Hello everyone, in the prior session we laid the foundation for understanding merchandising operations. In this session, we will narrow our focus specifically on the selling side of merchandising operation using a perpetual inventory system, a concept we introduced previously. We will begin by exploring the various transactions that occurs when a company makes a sale. This includes not only sales themselves, but handling situations like sales returns and allowances, where customers return goods or receive a partial refunds. We will also discuss discounts, which are incentive offered to customers for early payment. Also, we will discuss the importance of estimating sales return, which is a critical aspect of maintaining accurate financial records. Finally, we will dive into the logistics related to sales, such as transportation costs. By the end of this session, you will have a clear understanding on how to account for sales transaction a for a merchandising company using a perpetual inventory system. At the end, we will work a multiple choice question. Stay motivated and let's get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by analyzing or reviewing a basic sales transaction. Now, if we are using a perpetual inventory system, which we are, each transaction, each selling transaction will have two entries. And let me explain why. First, is we have to recognize the revenue because every transaction will have a revenue aspect of it. The revenue is the asset received from the customer such as cash or account receivable. So when the seller makes a sale, they would expect to receive cash or a promise to receive the cash, which is account receivable. So one part of the journal entry is the revenue or the sales part of it so you have to record the sale the other part of the transaction is the cost of the sale or the cost recognition we have a cost aspect when you when you make a sale you receive the money you have to give up something in return you have to give up the inventory let's assume you're selling a house you receive the money you give up the house this is the cost of the merchandise sold to the customer well if you're selling homes if that's your inventory, then that's your inventory. But this is a good picture of showing you why do we need two transactions. One to record the sale and one to record the cost of the sale. The cost of the sale is what? The cost of the sale is the amount you paid for that home. So let's assume you purchased that home. Let's go through this entry. Let's assume you are in the business of selling homes. Let's assume you sold this home for 200000 and that's your business. Therefore, you debited inventory, 200000 and let's assume you paid cash for that house. You credited cash, 200000 This is when you purchased the home. Now we're going to look at the sale entry. Now let's assume you sold this home for 275000 cash. You received cash, 275000 You credited sales revenue, 275000 So this is the revenue received. Now, this home, when you, when you receive the cash, you have to give up the home. The inventory here, you have to give up this inventory. We ha we're going to have to credit this inventory, 200000 and we have to debit cost of goods sold, 200000 So the inventory becomes an expense, and we have to recognize this cost. And that's why we have two entries, one for the sale, one for the cost. Let's work another example. ABC Traders sold merchandise worth of 5000 on credit to XYZ retailer. The cost of the merchandise to ABC was 1500 If we're using a perpetual inventory system, this transaction would be recorded using two journal entry. First, we have to make the revenue entry. 
debit account receivable credit sales well if we received cash we would have debited cash We're, we sold it on account are we done yet no if we're using a perpetual inventory system we have to record the cost of the sale in other words we have to expense 1500 we debit cost of goods sold cost of goods sold 1500 we credit merchandise inventory 1500 because in the past we had merchandise inventory of 1500 and now we sold it we have to reduce our merchandise inventory now just like we had say purchase discounts the seller also offers a discount to entice the buyer to pay early so sales discounts are reduction in the amount of revenue earned from sales offered to do what to encourage to entice the buyer to pay early because we want the buyer to pay early this help decrease the delay in receiving the cash and also by default reduce future collection effort why because there's an effort to collect the money if you can avoid this issue avoid this problem altogether and entice the the buyer to pay early go ahead and do it and just like the purchaser we give a credit period let's assume this is 30 days if the customer pay within a certain period amount of time we'll give them for example two percent off so here what we're saying is you have 30 days to pay this is the credit period if you pay within the discount period let's assume 10 days we're going to give you two percent off now there are two methods to record sales discount there's the gross method gross method means what it means you would record sales at full amount and sales discount when taken but this method would also require an adjusting entry at the end of the period to estimate future sales discount or right from the get-go you can record the sale at a net amount and you assume here that the customer will go ahead and take the discount record sales and the net amount sales amount less expected discount sometimes you might have to do an entry at the end of the year if you feel there are additional discount you would need to record let's take a look at the gross method first LMN sold merchandise on June 1st to PQR for ten thousand dollar the terms 2 slash 10 and 30 the goods cost seven thousand dollar to LMN well let's assume if PQR pays within the discount period well what's gonna happen is this if they pay within the discount period first we're gonna have to, using the gross amount we would record debit account receivable 10,000 credit sales 10,000 so this is what LMN would do and they will have also the debit cost of goods sold credit inventory for 7,000 but for simplicity I did not show you this cost component of it now if if the customer pays within the discount period do they have to pay 10,000 no we promise to give them 2% discount if they pay within 10 days well if they pay within 10 days they only have to pay 98% so we will debit cash 9,800 we will credit account receivable 10,000 although they only they paid 9,800 we credit receivable 10,000 and we debit an account called sales discount $200 now sales discount is a new account sales discount is a contra revenue contra revenue means what it means negative revenue it reduces revenue so if revenue if sales was 10,000 we're gonna say sales minus the returns net sales is 9800 remember we talked about net sales and I said we would look at what we deduct from sales one of the things that we can deduct from sales is sales discount which happens to be 200 for this example if the customer pays outside the discount period they'll have to pay us 10,000 we debit cash 10,000 we credit accounts receivable 10,000 this is the gross method so the gross method we don't make any assumption we would say we're gonna record the full amount then once the customer takes the discount we will record the discount and this is exactly what we did under the net method we assume that the customer will take the discount up front if that's the case we would say we made the sale for 10,000 we expect to receive 98% 
therefore we debit account receivable for only 9800 and we credit the sales for 9800 now the cost entry debit cost of goods sold credit inventory that's fine now if the customer if pqr pays within the discount period and this is what we expected how much will they pay they will pay 9800 so we will debit cash 9800 credit account receivable 9800 and life is good because account receivable is gone so we expect them to pay within the discount period we recorded the entry as if they are going to pay they did indeed to pay everyone is happy if they don't pay within the discount period what's going to happen is they are going to pay ten thousand dollar now what we need to do we need to make we need to create a new account why because we're going to be receiving more money than what we expected we expected 9800 we are going to receive guess what 10,000 why because the customer failed to take advantage of the discount that we gave them so they're going to pay us ten thousand dollar in cash but we only have an account receivable for that customer for 9800 well we're going to credit account receivable 9800 we're going to have 200 remaining for the 200 we are going to credit an account called sales discounts forfeited it means the customer failed to take that discount and this is for us other revenues another form of revenues it's going to increase our revenues so sales discount by itself is a contra revenue sales discount forfeited it means the customer failed to take advantage of what we gave them to take advantage of what's going to happen is we are going to credit an account called sales discount forfeited 200 which is another type of revenue let's take a look at another transaction we could see when we have sales sales returns and allowances this is involved handling dissatisfied customers and possible future loss of sales why well because what's going to happen is this if the customer returned the item it's going to reduce our sales obviously right if, if the customer returned the item it's going to reduce our sales which is it's not the best because uh, because it's going to reduce our sales therefore we're going to have an account called sales return rather than reducing sales we're going to have a sales return and the sales return just like sales discount is a contra revenues it's going to reduce our revenues so it's sales allowance the same concept as purchase allowance what we will do is we will reduce the account receivable for the client because the goods were damaged or the customer was not was not satisfied so it's a reduction in the selling price due to issues like damaged goods well we tell the customer keep it let's assume we made a thousand dollar worth of sale to a customer when they received it the goods were damaged the customer was not happy we told the customer look we're gonna reduce your balance by 200 now you owe us 800 so we gave them a sales discount versus the customer returning the whole thing now what do we have to do with sales return we're gonna have to estimate under the new revenue recognition standard companies should record sales revenue at the amount they expect to actually realize what does that mean this means you must reduce sales revenue by estimating the amount of potential sales return so we have to be proactive when we make a sale we have to guess up front how much we will the customer return to us well what do we use we use historical data we assume that a five percent of sales are returned on average then for every sale we estimate five percent so that's what we have to do let's take a look at an example tech innovators has sales of 800,000 and the cost for that sale is 480 tech innovators estimate that 5% of the merchandise sold will be returned what do we do at the end of the year here's what we do at the end of the year we estimate returns we debit on December 31st x zero year zero we debit sales return which is a contra revenue and we credit refund payable which is a liability we expect to refund 40,000 worth of goods now also we debit estimated 
return inventory. Basically, it's an adjunct inventory account. It works like inventory, but it's not really inventory. It's an estimated return of inventory, but you can think of it as inventory. And we credit and we reduce cost of goods sold. Why do we reduce cost of goods sold? Because when we made the purchase, we debited account receivable, credit sales, debited cost of goods sold, credited inventory. This is when we made the sale. Remember, we have those two entries. So if we expect returns, returns are the opposite of a sale therefore we debit we do the opposite rather than debiting inventory we're going to debit estimated return inventory and we're going to credit reduced cost of goods sold now we're also going to deal with actual returns actual return is when the customer actually returned the items so on january 1st on january 25th x1 the customer actually returned merchandise with a cash sales of 3000 and a cost of 1200 Let's look at the journal entry. When the customer actually makes the return, what we do on January 25th, the following year, we have to refund to them 3000 Yes, what we'll do is we reduce our refund liability. Remember, we estimated refund to be for the whole period 40,000 remember now we are returning 3,000 so we reduce the refund we debit refund liability and we credit cash we give them back the cash now they actually return the item to us we debit merchandise inventory now this is actual inventory and we remove the estimated return inventory we remove the other inventory so we increase the inventory and we remove estimated returns inventory as I told you, think of estimated return inventory as an asset or an adjunct asset as an asset. Although it's estimated, it's like I expect to receive it. Now I received it. So I reduce one asset, increase the other asset. Now, what do I have to do every once in a while? Every once in a while as a company, you might have to adjust your merchandise inventory. Why? Why do you have to adjust your merchandise inventory? Well, you might have to adjust merchandise inventory for shrinkage, loss, theft. Because if someone steals inventory from the company, from the warehouse, they don't go by the register and they check them out. They don't do that. They go through the back door. So what does that mean? It means the record, the computer record, and the actual count they differ they're not they're supposed to equal to each other if you are using a perpetual system the computer system should tell you exactly how many units you have how many units you have but if someone stole them or you had damage and we throw them away and we did not scan them properly we don't know about this therefore every once in a while we have to adjust adjust inventory for shrinkage we said we set sales discount returns to comply with the revenue recognition let's take a look at shrinkage def wholesaler found a discrepancy at the end of the year the merchandise inventory count shows 30,000 so we look at our computer system and it shows that we have we're supposed to have 30,000 of inventory well what companies do they do a physical count. They actually count the inventory every year because for that purpose, to make sure the inventory record comply with the physical count. If they don't, we have to make an adjustment. Well, what does that mean? Here we are missing, we are missing $500. Why are we missing this? Theft. We call it shrink. The technical word is shrinkage. A loss. Uh, we throw it away and we did not scan it. It was damaged. We did not take it through the system. So what do we do with this $500? We debit an expense called cost of goods sold, or sometimes we call it just a loss, depending on how large are these shrinkage. Some companies, they keep track of these shrinkage separately. A case in point is Dick's Sporting Goods. There's so much theft in Dick's Sporting Goods, they, they keep track of the theft separately. It's that large of a number. And we credit, obviously, the inventory is gone. We credit merchandise inventory. For the seller, we have something called freight out. Remember freight in, and we said freight in is an asset. Freight in is when the buyer buys the inventory and they pay for the transportation cost. Now we're dealing with freight out. Freight out is the seller's cost to ship the product. Freight out is simply a delivery expense. So when a seller sells something and they say, don't worry, I will deliver it on my expense, it's a delivery expense. 
if they're paying for that delivery now if the buyer is paying for the delivery it's called freight in and freight in is an asset this is for the buyer for the seller it's a cost of doing business it's a delivery expense it's an expense example UVW paid $50 to ship goods to a customer on July 15th what is the freight out how do we record the freight out expense we debit freight out or delivery expense for 50 and if we paid cash we credit cash $50 let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com XYZ Corporation sold 12,000 worth of merchandise on account 2 slash 10 and 30 the cost of the merchandise is 7,500 using the net method what's the correct journal entry for the sale well if we're using the net method what's the net method the net method assumes what it assumes that we're gonna we're gonna take the discount up front what does that mean it means when we debit account receivable we're gonna debit account receivable and we're gonna credit sales for the net amount the net amount is how much do we expect to receive if we're selling 12,000 worth of goods and we are giving the customer 2% off it means what it means we're gonna we are only going to receive 98% of the bill 0.98 it means we're gonna be receiving in cash seven eleven thousand seven sixty it means any answer with an account receivable of twelve thousand is out debit account receivable eleven thousand seven sixty debit account receivable eleven thousand seven sixty do we credit sales 12,000 or do we credit sales 11,760? Of course, the total debits equal total credits. There's no, uh, in other words, we have to also book the sales at the net amount. Be careful, there's no third account involved. We debit account receivable 11,760. We credit sales 11,760. Now, if the customer don't pay within the discount period, guess what? We're gonna get an additional $250. We call it sales discount forfeited but if the customer pays on time everything is good we expect them to pay on time they paid on time life goes on what should you do now you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional resources multiple choice lectures that's going to help you whether you are investing in yourself uh, studying for the CPA exam CMA exam taking financial accounting courses good luck and stay safe